This is our uh, 390 Ford head. You can see it needs some work. What we're doing is uh, we're, we put guides, of course, in these. If we take a close look at the seat here, I'm not sure how well this is going to be able to capture this, but uh, the seats are definitely sunk on this head. You can see we've already drilled out and put new valve guides in. The intake seat is fine. It looks pretty good. We can recut that. The problem is the exhaust seat, if you take a good look at it, these seats are pretty sunk. And the reason being <clears throat> is that these are what you would call cast integral seats. And they're basically soft. And so when the unleaded fuel went away, or uh, I'm sorry, when the regular fuel went away and we went to unleaded, uh, the seats on these older heads would get hammered into the heads. You can see we've actually cut this one out and we're getting ready to put this, we're going to take this seat insert and press it in there. So that's what we're working on right now. We've got the guides done, but in order for this head to be compatible with unleaded fuel, we have to put hardened uh, seats in this thing. So basically, we're taking this old cylinder head, we're reworking it, and this is our cutter. This is actually an adjustable cutter that we have, and you can see it's got an adjustment on it. And the way that we adjust these cutters is we take the seat, and we have a fixture. This fixture here is designed for setting the size of the cutter. What we do is we take dial calipers and we establish the size of our seat. We, we measure it. And then of course we have our fixture here and we have a place to mount the tool. This fixture was made for this tool. And then we actually put our dial indicator up, find the max point of the tool diameter. And then of course we, we set our fixture according to the diameter of the seat. Now this, this fixture has already been, or this, this adjustable cutter rather, has already been set for the size of this valve seat that we're installing. Now the size of the cutter is actually about seven or eight thousand smaller than the diameter of this seat because the seat has to be pressed in in order for it to stay in. <laughs> so we actually adjust our cutter to a smaller size than the actual outside diameter of the seat once we get that set. Then we take our cutter and we can go ahead and set that up on the cylinder head. Now the cylinder head has been leveled. It has to be leveled to the machine because everything has to be square. The way we do that is we use a level that actually mounts on to our pilot. So our pilot is in the guide there. We have a level we can set up and we level the head that way. Once we get the head level and squared to the cradle and the table, this is our cradle on our machine. Once we get that done, then we can go ahead and set up our tooling here. We're going to run the tool down and then we have this stepped shaft that goes on there. And that actually centers the tool. Once we get that done, of course, we have our, our driver set up in the machine. And we want to bring this over and set this up. And then we can go ahead and you know, start machining that seat out of there. So we run that down. And then, of course, we're going to line this up with our tool. That groove there fits right into the tool. And that's actually what drives this thing. So once we get that lined up where it needs to be, then we just bottom out on the seat. So right now I have got this press sitting right on that seat. What I will actually do is <clears throat> we have a depth gauge here. And so once we sit on the seat with our cutter, we're, we're going to lock it into place. We're going to lock this spindle down. So now my cutter is sitting right on that the top of that seat, but the spindle's locked. See, I, I can't move it. So I'm locked there. And then I take 
of course the valve seat that I'm actually going to be installing in the cylinder head which is one of these and I'm going to use this to set my height because the depth of the seat is important. If I don't have the correct depth for the seat, uh, I won't know how deep to go. So we actually use the seat that's going to be used on that cylinder head to create our depth. And this is what our, our little depth gauge here does. It works really well. We just simply place the seat here and this does not, uh, this only allows the machine to go down to this point. So we're going to lock this into place using the depth of our seat as a reference. We lock it. Okay, there's the depth of our seat. We just set the seat aside and now we're ready to go ahead and start cutting that seat. So we'll turn our spindle on. And you can see our cutter is ready to go. And then we simply just unlock the bottom lock, which releases our uh, drill press here. Sorry. <laughs> um, we simply unlock this. And then we basically, uh, now this thing becomes like a drill press. We've already got our depth cut, so we just go ahead and we cut the depth of our seat. We're actually cutting what we call a counter bore into the cylinder head. We don't have to worry about going too deep because we've already got our, we know we're going to stop when that stop bottoms out. So we, we go ahead and we run down. We know our diameter is right because our cutter is set. And once we get that seat, or that counter bore rather, cut to the correct depth and, we, and, and obviously the correct diameter, then we go ahead and we press our hardened steel insert in, and voila, you have upgraded your cylinder head for unleaded fuel. So this, this cylinder head here is actually off of a 1968 390, and so it uh, definitely did not have hardened seats. So you can see we're getting close to bottoming out here. We're going to go down just until we... Well, the stop's not going to let us go but beyond our maximum depth. So you can hear the sound in the cutter change. We're not actually cutting any more depth because we've bottomed out on our stop. And there we go. Turn your spindle off. And this, this is an air table. The nice thing about this machine is it's got a foot pedal here. And I can actually hit the pedal and then this table will move for me. I can pretty much put this table wherever I want. So I run the table out away from the cutting head so I can get my tooling off. Go ahead and pull this off and gently set it aside. You need to be real careful with this kind of tooling. Uh, this, cooling, this tooling is actually very expensive. Uh, one of these cutters is about 250 bucks and we have to have a, a multiple array of them for different size seats. So anytime you work with precision tooling like this, you want to be real careful with it. You never want to jam this, you know, you never want to drop this or jam it down on the head or anything of that nature. So there's our pilot and you can see we've we've cut, you know, considerable amount of chips out of there. But we actually have a counter bore now. And of course once we vacuum the chips out of the way, which we will do before we try to put the seat in, because everything has to be very clean. Then we'll simply take our insert. We're obviously not going to do it now because of all the chips, but I just want to give you kind of a synopsis of how this goes. Our seat goes there. We have a driver that goes over this. This is the driver, and it pilots onto that guide. And then, of course, we have a tool that actually sits on top of that seat. You put your driver down on, and it it, the step fits inside that driver just like so and then of course we just take a hammer and we're gonna take our hammer here and then we will just knock that seat in and we're actually press fitting the seat because like I said earlier that seat is actually bigger in diameter than the hole and so we have to press it in and that assures that once the seat is installed in the head that it's gonna stay there and so hopefully 